Hey actor producer, actorpreneur, welcome to the channel. Like, subscribe, do all the things. Let's dig right into it. Today we're going to talk about micro jitters, one of the biggest giveaways of low budget content that I see on demo reels and in films that um, actors and also just frankly filmmakers make uh, for themselves or on shoestring budgets. So what is micro jitters? And it's uh, I'll, I'll show you a clip here. Um, of what I mean. It is, it's basically a phenomena of small cameras and a dead giveaway of low budget production. If you don't have a refined eye to spot it, often people overlook it, but it's, it's really a huge red flag because no major motion picture has this phenomena because they're either using stabilization rigs or they're using large cameras that just don't behave that way. So what it comes from is when you're holding a, a small DSLR or a mirrorless camera and your hands are very close to the center or the sensor of the camera, your tiny little movements of your human hands reflect very um, obviously, or I guess to some not as obviously, but to a refined eye it's very obviously, in the picture and so you get these tiny little jitters and it doesn't really happen often when you have a lens like this for instance i shoot a lot on one of my cameras is a panasonic uh, lumix gh5 i love it and i have this uh lumix lens for it that's a native lens and it has what's called ois optical image stabilization and so there's a motor inside of this lens that actually counters these micro movements the more zoomed in the more telephoto your picture is um or your lens is set to is like this is a 35 to 100 millimeters like if i was on the 100 end and this optical Im image stabilization uh, image stabilization was off it would be really obvious like the, the image would be all over the place it's a little closer to the 35 end or if you even have a wider lens it becomes less obvious but when ois is off it's there if you're hand holding. If you have it on a rig, you don't really get this phenomena. But a lot of low budget filmmakers shoot handheld. And they also try to make, you know, movements and stuff like that. They don't put it on a tripod, they don't put it on a dolly, and they try to sort of, you know, dolly over or come up with the camera or just hold it straight. And this phenomena occurs. And it's really awful because just eliminating that jitter would really up your production level. You can make something look pretty high uh, quality and high level if you just get rid of that little phenomena. Now, I have, just because it's the most recent example and I don't want to go digging for older footage, I shoot handheld like that when I shoot stuff with my friends, you know, just for fun. So I have this music video I helped my friend Melinda do uh, for her Christmas song. She did a remake of Nat King Cole's Christmas song, really beautiful rendition. 61,000 views on our little video on uh, on YouTube, but she got over 2 million on this video on uh, TikTok. So I'm not saying it's she got that kind of success because we removed micro jitters, but it helped at taking something that we shot in like an hour at her house with no crew. It was just me and her handheld. And we use that little trick as, as one of the tools in our arsenals to take it to the next level. So just so you know what I did shoot this video on, and I'll show you a little clip here. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire Jack Frost nipping at your nose the movements are pretty smooth. I mean, it's handheld, so it's always going to be a little bit of a handheld vibe. But the movements are pretty smooth. And we wanted it to be very warm, very low light, very blurred out background. But we didn't have a lot of crew and a lot of time and a lot of resources because, again, we just do these kinds of little videos um, for her social media and stuff. And, yeah, occasionally they blow up like this one. Again, 2 million views on TikTok. It's pretty awesome. It's probably past that by now. Um, but I shoot on this lens that I really love, the Voigtlander uh, Knocked on 25, because the aperture goes down to f0.95, which is really, really, for those of you who don't know what that means, the lens lets in a lot, a lot, a lot of light. So you can shoot in low light. It really blurs out the background nicely. And um, it can shoot 
you know, so you don't have to have this huge uh, lighting setup. So basically what I did for this setup here is, is her, these Amazon electric candles. Um, and then basically, if you can imagine here on, on, on the left side of the frame, there's a bed sheet hung and two just like really simple $90 Amazon LED lights behind the bed sheet to just give it this soft look. And then of course, set to uh, a warm color temperature so it's nice and orange and, and warm and then a, you know a little bit of tweaking in post of course but um the biggest issue with shooting like that because we don't have a lot of time and I don't set up a lot of things is that i was shooting handheld with this voigtlander that does not have optical image stabilization often these prime lenses these single fixed focal length lenses so there's only a 25 millimeter on like this one that goes from 35 millimeter to 100 so you have a bigger zoom range this is fixed 25 millimeter and on a GH5 might be too technical. It, it, it's actually sort of more of a 50 millimeter equivalent because the sensor in a GH5 is a micro four thirds, which is a little smaller than super 35, but we don't have to get into that stuff now. I don't have image stabilization on it. So this is like one of those lenses where you see this jitter. So um, what do I mean? Here's an example, right? So I pulled a clip raw straight out of the camera. Try to smile once in a while. You see that? See how it just kind of look look at look at the edge here, the distance between this candle and the edge and see how it just kind of jumbles all over the place. So the image is a little jumpy, a little twitchy. Just just very subtle. That is one of the biggest giveaways of low budget production ever. Because if you just look at this image, it's not a bad looking image. It's quite warm, it's soft, the light is nice, there's colors behind her, it's blurred out. So this actually looks fairly professional. It's a little grainy, a little noisy because we had it at a high ISO. We're shooting in very dark conditions, but I had that lens all the way open, uh, so you know, it, it looks pretty nice, but this jitter. Now here it's getting pretty extreme. That's just screaming, I put no money into this, okay? So we wanna get rid of this so that we can end up with a video that gets two million views. So how do we do that? Um, if you have Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, it's very easily done. Now this sometimes takes a little tweaking and it doesn't always work this perfectly. But for you guys who are just getting started, um, try this first. And, you know, as you play with the parameters and the tools here, you'll get better and better. Uh, but this hopefully will get you started. So once you've edited your film, so you want this done. You want the edit to be complete before you do this. So I have my whole video edited. And by the way, if you want to see this whole video, I'll post the link in the description. Uh, but again... You want the, edit, the, the picture to be locked because this is an additional process that you have to apply to each clip and you don't want to start applying it to clips that don't actually need it. This is one of the last things that you do um, either right before or actually probably during or after the color correction process. You, you could do it right before color. It doesn't really matter which stage of post you do it in, but it's got to be after the picture is locked. Okay, so let's say this clip that I just pulled to demonstrate Let's say I wanted to get rid of the jitters um, here. Let's find a little spot where it's prevalent. So it's pretty prevalent right here. So let's just um, make a cut here. And we'll cut here. And I'm just going to go ahead and remove uh, this and... Uh, this, oops, sorry. Okay, so let's just work on this one little clip right here. And we're gonna stabilize this. So the process itself is very simple. It's just sometimes people overdo it with the settings and it creates this weird artifact so what we're going to do is we're going to just take the edge off and smooth it out a bit so we're going to go into our effects over here uh in premiere pro and if you don't see the effects window you can go to window make sure the effects window is checked effects and we're going to look for you can search warp 
stabilizer. So you're going to grab that one and just drag it onto your clip. And it says analyzing in background, but the standard settings, the default settings are horrible and we don't want that. So we're going to go to effect controls. Remember, this is just to remove the micro jitters. So uh, we're going to go to effect controls. And we're going to go stabilization, smooth motion, not no motion. If it's on no motion, uh, change it to smooth motion, smoothness. We're going to bring this down to 2%. Sometimes 1% is enough, 2%, so you just want to take the edge off. And you can either do subspace warp or position scale rotation. Subspace warp, sometimes you'll see if you put the percentage here to like 5 or 10% or sometimes even at 2%, it sort of warps the image in a weird way. If you see this like odd kind of jellying of the image happening, try position scale rotation. So we're going to stick to subspace warp for now. Preserve scale, no. Framing, stabilize crop, and auto scale. You want these three to be active. And uh, you don't need to go into advanced because this is just um, uh, to, to take the edge off. So let's see with this effect applied. By the way, if you can click here, this turns the effect on and off. And you see it'll zoom in just a little bit because what it does is it finds movements and it counters them. So if the picture goes down, it automatically makes the picture go up. So it equalizes those movements. And because you set it at a low percentage, it only does it slightly. So it's not trying to negate big camera moves. So if you're moving your camera, it's not trying to fight that. It just knows to look for just these little subtle one or 2% variances in the image. And that's exactly what we want. We want to fight that micro jitter. So let's see, I'm just going to go ahead and render this real quick. So let's see if that did the trick for us. That is a lot smoother. There's still some movement, but it's smooth now. So this looks a lot more cinematic because when you're holding a big cinema camera and you're shooting handheld, that's more the kind of handheld motion that you see. It's more this sort of smoother motion. It's not this like micro jitter. So look at this before, uh, after. And we're going to turn the effect off. This is the before. You see those little jerks. One more time. And after. In fact, let me do something. So I went ahead and I turned the warp stabilizer on on the left and off on the right so that you can see them side by side. See how much smoother that is? Okay, I hope you like this video. I hope it helps to increase your production quality and your production level or perceived production level. Don't let them know you're shooting no budget. Make it look high end. And this is one of the best tricks in the book. See you on the next one.